Grace and peace. My name is Dr. Keith K. Curry with my wife, Pastor Keisha M. Curry. We're the senior pastors of the Free and Independent Apostolic Church right here in the beautiful city of Jacksonville, North Carolina. Listen, today is a great day to have good church, but we got some rules. We call them CDC rules. We have capacity, which means we do not fill the building. Also, we wear our masks, and when we wear our masks, we cover it with our nose and our mouth covered together. We also have sanitizer stations where you will wash your hands and you'll get sanitized. We also social distance six feet if possible. Listen, these are the rules so that you can be blessed, you can bless God, and you can be saved. So please follow the rules so we can have great church. Listen, today is going to be a great day to hear from God. Intense prayer should be starting right about Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God, we thank you and we bless you on today, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We ask that you come and sit in this place, oh God. You ask that you come and heal everybody on today, oh God. Send your glory down on today, oh God. We love you, oh God. We praise you, oh God. We give you honor on today, oh God. For you are great, oh God. And it is a great day to praise you, oh God. Oh God, we are so thankful, oh God, for your glory, oh God. There is none like you in heaven on earth, oh God. Oh God, you are so great, oh God, you are awesome, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, we bless your name, oh God. Oh God, you are awesome, oh God, you are great, oh God. Oh God, we come and we give you praise on today, for today is the day that you have made for us, oh God. Oh God, we give you honor on today, oh God, because you are awesome, oh God. You are wonderful, oh God. You are awesome, oh God. Oh God, there is none like you. There is none like you, oh God. Oh God, we ask that you come in here today. You bless us, oh God. Oh God, you ask for deliverance on today, oh God. Oh God, we ask that you come and you touch each and every soul on today, oh God. Oh God, because you are the only one who can do it, oh God. There is none like you, oh God. There is none like you, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for your presence on today, oh God. We thank you for your glory on today, oh God. We thank you for your love on today, oh God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, oh God. I cannot thank you enough, oh God, for there is none like you, Jesus. I, there is none like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh God, we ask that you come and you sit down your reign, oh God. You sit down your glory and your love, oh God. You sit down the heavens, oh God. Let the angels protect this place on today, oh God. Oh God, we ask that you protect our apostle, oh God, as he's out and doing service, oh God. You ask that you protect the leader of this house, oh God, so that they can lead us well today, oh God. We ask that you speak on today, oh God. We ask that you speak on today, oh God. Let us hear your voice, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh God, we bless you on today, oh God. Oh God, we love you on today, oh God. For there is none like you, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Oh God, there is none like you, oh God. There is none like you, oh God. Oh God, you reign forever and ever, oh God. Oh God, you reign forever and ever, oh God. Oh God, we love you, oh God. Oh God, we praise you, oh God. Oh God, we love you, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Oh God, we ask, oh God, that you touch each of us, oh God. Fill us up with you, oh God, on today, oh God. Touch us in a different way, oh God. Let us hear from you clearly on today, oh God. Let us get what we need and not hold anything on back on today, oh God. Let us just fill the house, oh God, with praise and worship, oh God. Let us fill the house with praise and worship, oh God. Let us do your will on today, oh God. Let us please you on today, oh God. For there is none other like you, oh God. There is none other like you, oh God. Oh God, we give you love and we give you glory on today, oh God. For you deserve it, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh God, we ask for you to come into this place on today, oh God. We ask that you sit in the room, oh God. We ask that you touch each and every soul on today, oh God. Fill us up with you, oh God. Fill us up with you, oh God. Fill us with you, oh God, for there is none like you, oh God. Oh God, we love you, oh God. We worship you on today, oh God. Give us a new spirit, oh God. Give us a new spirit, oh God. We ask that you touch the speaker of the house on today, oh God, so that every single thing that comes out of your mouth is you, oh God.
God. Oh God, we love you, oh God. We ask that you let her speak fluently, oh God. Oh God, we ask that you sit with her, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Sit in the room, oh God. Send down the heavens, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We ask that you shake the atmosphere on today, oh God. We ask that you stir up this place, oh God. Oh God, pour out your spirit, oh God. Pour out your spirit, oh God. For there is none like you, oh God, and you the only one who can do it, oh God. Oh God, we love you, oh God. We love you, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
righteous run in. I need you to lift your voice. I need you to lift your voice. I need you to open up your mouth in Zion. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower, no matter what you're going through. Come on, let's go.
go ahead and raise your voice. Give God a shout of praise in this place. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous one in and they are safe. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on. Come on. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to clap your hands in this place. Begin to clap your hands in this place. Tell God that you love him. Tell him that you love him. Tell him that you love him. Tell him that you love him. Hallelujah. Let's begin to set the atmosphere for the word in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth and give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Let me do. We're going to keep going. I ask that you clap your hands for our God. He's mighty and awesome. He's a strong tower. He's the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. 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 He's our Savior. He's our strong tower. He's mighty in battle. He's loving. He's kind. He's merciful. He's awesome. He's majestic in all his ways. He's omnipotent and omniscient. He's omnipresent. He is the ancient of days. He's the beginning and the end. He is God. He never changes. He does not fail. He loves you in spite of all your situations. Yeah. Give God praise. Even when I lost my mind, God was still there. Even when I should have died, God was still there. And in the times when I told God no, he was still there. Pushing me, telling you can move, telling me I can stand, telling me I can stand on the word of God. Give God praise because he's Now let's give God praise for Dr. Todd M. Hall, our chief apostle, who covers our father. Then we're also going to give God praise for our senior leader, the angels of this house, apostle Dr. Keith K. Curry. And the fragrance of this house, our mom, Pastor Keisha Curry, hallelujah, 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 we moving forward. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm here for the announcements for the week, amen. Here at Free and Independent Apostolic Church, where our senior leader is Dr. Keith K. Curry, we are here on Wednesdays for our Word on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And then on Sunday morning for our worship service at 10 a.m. We're filling empty pews. There is a seat and a purpose waiting for you. We are here at 475 North Marine Boulevard in Jacksonville, North Carolina, where a church so alive is worth the drive. <laughs> Apostle Keith K. Curry, The Theology of God is our series for this month of May. And today we will be here from our very own evangelist, Jaqueta Lee. She will be bringing forth the word on this morning. Amen. We thank God for her on today and for the word of God that she's going to bring forth to the people of God on today. Amen. Also, our instructor, Evangelist Jaqueta Lee, is teaching every Thursday at 7 p.m. for our members in training. If you have not participated in this class and you are a new member, you will be in the next members in training class where new members learn about God, 
and the free of NC. And again, this goes every Thursday at 7 p.m. So all new members, you will be known when you are getting to this class. Of, excuse me, our campus pastor will let you know when it's time for you to participate in this class. Amen. Apostle Keith K. Curry, what's the word? This is our series for the month of June. Amen. So the month of June, we will be hearing from our pastors. So Pastor Aaron Robinson will be coming forth on June the 2nd. Pastor Georgella Wright will be coming forth on June the 6th. Prophetess Kayita Gamble will be coming forth on June the 9th. Pastor Philip Hangers will be coming forth on June the 13th. Pastor Frederick Gamble will be coming on June the 16th. And Elder Brandy will be coming forth on June the 27th. And our very own spiritual father will be speaking on Father's Day, which is Sunday, June the 20th. Amen. Greater Inspirational Outreach, Richmond, Virginia presents a birthday celebration, 1 Timothy 5 and 17. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. This is going on June the 5th, which is this Friday, um, excuse me, Saturday at 11 a.m., 7481 Middleton Turnpike, Virginia. Amen. Yes. I said it wrong. <laughs> The speaker will be Apostle Keith K. Curry from Free and Independent Apostolic Church. So the impact team will be leaving on Saturday morning at 6 a.m. so that we can make it in time for this service. And it is hosted by our very own Pastor Regina Mosley Martin. Amen. Registration opens June the 1st, 475 North Marine Boulevard in Jacksonville, North Carolina. The aftermath, the Shabbat Southern Region Holy Convocation, the post-COVID church environment. Our presiding prelate is Chief Apostle Dr. Todd M. Hall, and our regional bishop is our very own Dr. Keith K. Curry. This Holy Convocation will be June the 21st through the 25th. If you have not already done so, you can turn in your $50 registration fee to me on today and on Wednesday. We will be collecting that. $50 per member, $100 for the leaders. Amen. Free and Independent Apostolic Church presents July 15th through the 17th. The registration for this is $50, and it begins on June the 28th. This is the Women's Conference hosted by our very own Apostle Keith K. Curry, the attack on the women's anointing. So any sessionals and clinicals will be coming to you soon. But again, this women's conference will be hosted by us June, July 15th through the 17th. And you can turn in your $50 registration on June the 28th. Become an e-member. Amen. Freeofnc.org is how you can do that. Don't let the distance keep you from God. You can join us and become a virtual member. And you will be covered by our apostle, Keith K. Curry, and our pastor, Keisha M. Curry. You'll be able to log into all of our services, and you can give on this app also. And if you are more than three hours away, come on and be an e-member. Join us. You will not be disappointed. Amen. And asking that everyone, please govern yourself according to the announcements of the week. Amen. And I'm here to welcome our visitors on this morning. Amen. Free and independent, we got some visitors that decided to join us on today and be a part of us on today. Today we have Timothy Steedley. If you're in the house, could you please stand? Welcome. Welcome to us. Glad that you joined us on this morning, Mr. Timothy. And then we have Kavon Delachek. I know I messed it up. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Friend Independent, let's welcome my visitors on today. We pray that you enjoy yourself and that you will come back and join and be with us again. Amen. Grace and peace. Have a uh, multiply to y'all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, just want to let y'all know uh, it's time to get rich. So let's get to our pockets so we can give unto the Lord, um, and we have four ways of giving, we, we do accept cash, we also have swiping capabilities in the back for um, Lady Smith, 
can see it out there. We also have the text offer. Um, all you gotta do is go to 910-631-5400. <laughs> and we also give the visa of our church. We have an app as well. Go download it. And yeah. All right, let's get to it.
a praise.
watch them as they said this was your 90 seconds to give God praise. But I don't know about you, but we serve a great and mighty God. We didn't come here to watch. We didn't come here to spectate. The same God that was here on last week, the same God that was here on Wednesday, is the same God that is here on today. And you owe your God a praise. So open up your mouth, put your hands together, and give the Lord some praise.
the blood of Jesus that was shed for you. Make it personal. The blood of Jesus that was shed for you. The blood of Jesus that can do anything. That can cover your life. That can cover your children. Drink this in remembrance of me. Now give him a praise for his communion. Give him a praise for a newness. Hallelujah. chance hallelujah this is your moment hallelujah I don't care what you did I don't care what you fell into God woke you up on this morning he started you on your way hallelujah when others didn't make it hallelujah he saw fit hallelujah to bless you hallelujah so this is your moment hallelujah I want you to make it personal this is my moment on today hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. We going into the word. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to be obedient. Hallelujah. Unto my leader. Hallelujah. But you're going to have a chance. Hallelujah. You're going to have a chance to give God a praise like never before. Hallelujah. Before this is over. Hallelujah. Those of you who may not know how to, you're going to give them a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God for our leader. Hallelujah. Apostle Curry and Pastor Curry. Hallelujah. We bless God for being here. Hallelujah. We bless God for this moment. Hallelujah. 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 I want you, hallelujah, to just go with me, hallelujah, on this morning. Prepare your hearts and your minds to receive because the topic on today is a God of a second chance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And my subtopic for you is, so what now? Hallelujah. So we got a second chance. Hallelujah. What are we going to do now? Hallelujah. And last week, the man of God began to touch on it on Wednesday. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to flow right into it. Hallelujah. If you would go with me to Jonah. Hallelujah. My key scripture is going to be Jonah 3, 1 through 10. Hallelujah. And it reads, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach it unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. 
And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn... Who can tell if God will turn around and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God repented of the evil that he said that he would do unto them and he did it not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to start. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to look at Jonah on today. Hallelujah. I know we talked about it on Wednesday. Hallelujah. But I want to show you. Hallelujah. What do you do when you get a second chance? But before we get a second chance, why is a second chance necessary? Hallelujah. Because we've all stood in this place. Hallelujah. So if we go back to the church, first chapter in Jonah, we see the word of God coming unto Jonah, telling him to go and preach hallelujah to the city of Nineveh. And Jonah, just like us, hallelujah, just like me, hallelujah, I'm not going to tell your testimony, but just like me, I said, God, not so. You didn't call me to go preach to nobody. And just like he did, he went the opposite direction. I felt myself going the opposite direction of what the Lord had called me to do. Hallelujah. And Jonah went and paid the fare. We heard the story to get on a ship, hallelujah to go far away from what God had called him. Isn't that just like man, hallelujah, when we don't think that we are worthy, when we don't think that somebody else is worthy, hallelujah, for us to do what God called, we'll do any and everything to get away. And Jonah found himself doing any and everything, hallelujah. And I, I wanted to look at it because I kept looking at the first chapter, and it talked about when Jonah got on that ship, these men and these sailors, hallelujah, they did not serve the one great mighty God, hallelujah, because I'm reading the scripture, it tells me that as the seas begin to turn and God begin to uh, stir up the storm because Jonah wasn't uh, doing what he was supposed to do and God had to get his attention, these men who had nothing to do with what God had commanded Jonah have now become affected by Jonah's choice not to do what God has said. Hallelujah. So we have to look at when we don't do what God has told us to do, who are we affected? Who are we putting in harm's way? Because on this ship, these men now found themselves about to die. They don't know what's about to happen. And they begin to pray unto their gods. And when you read the scripture, G is lowercase, which tells me it wasn't the one and mighty God. It was their gods that they begin to pray to, to find out what was happening. And Jonah, just like us, in the midst of our disobedience and sin, he's down sleep in the bottom of the ship. How do you find peace in your mess and you leave everybody else to deal with your mess and try to clean it up? Hallelujah. So the men begin to come and cast lots and they came to Jonah. Hallelujah. And I'm giving you the brief version. They came to Jonah and they said, what meanest thou this? Why are you here? What is going on? And he began to tell them that he's running, hallelujah, from God. Hallelujah. And now they're really afraid, like, whoa, which tells me they knew of God. They heard about him, but they chose not to serve him. Hallelujah. So in the midst of Jonah's disobedience, even though he doesn't get credit for this, God still turned it. And those men, hallelujah, they they did not want to cast him overboard because Jonah said, throw me over. They said, no, 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 we're going to try. Just like the ones that love us, right? They don't want to throw us over. They said, no, no, we got it. We can do it. We can do it. So they tried everything they could to row him over. And God said, not so. You're not going to do it. So they had to come to realization, okay, we're going to throw him over. As soon as he threw him over, they begin to understand and see the power of God. Hallelujah. So even when you think you're getting away, and even when you think that you have run it from God, he'll still use the situation that you're in to bring salvation to somebody else. But why do we have to go that way? We thank God for them getting salvation on that day. But Jonah is still sitting in the midst of his mess. Hallelujah. Still even through that, determined not to serve God. So we heard on Wednesday, God prepared the great fish. And I begin to think about the great fish. And Jonah, you know, he uh, went down and the fish kept going deeper and deeper. But think about your life. Think about the circumstances. Think about what you proclaim unbearable, that you just couldn't make it out. You just couldn't see no way. And until you realized that you needed God, he just allowed you to sink lower and lower and lower. And the cares of the world begin to tie you up. They begin to bound you. You didn't feel like you could do anything. You feel like you couldn't move you felt like you couldn't breathe and until you came to your senses you would continue to drown 
But he came to his senses and he had to pray. He had to remind himself, Lord, I repent. Hallelujah. So in the midst of your sin, in the midst of your disobedience, stop and repent. Hallelujah. Because when you repent, hallelujah, you open up the door. Hallelujah. For God to step in and have his way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So even now, hallelujah, in disobedience, God is showing Jonah mercy, right? Just like he does us. Hallelujah. So as Jonah repents, hallelujah, he's now brought back to land. This is the part that I was like, okay, God. And I saw myself. He's now brought back to land. And God brought him right back to the beginning point. So we did all that to think we was getting away. We went and did everything we could. Drink, smoke, lay up. You said, I don't need this. I'm going to do what I can. God, I ain't doing what you said. Where we end up right back at. He ended right back in the same spot. The scripture says it was a three days journey. Let me tell you how, how this was. Jonah didn't take three days. One day he made it, hallelujah, to preach and proclaim the word of God, hallelujah. And one day he did what he was supposed to do in three days. But let me tell you what I'm excited about because God didn't change his mind. God could have sent anybody else, hallelujah, to do the job that he had given Jonah. But he said, this is what I have commanded of you and you will go forth, hallelujah, and preach and teach and do what I have proclaimed, hallelujah. So Jonah had a second chance and he took advantage of that second chance chance and he went and he proclaimed the word of the Lord and as we read the people begin to fast hallelujah so when you hallelujah do what you're supposed to do just like in your disobedience you affect think about all those that are missing out hallelujah because you don't walk worthy and you don't do what God has called you to do each and every one of us in this building has a purpose why evangelist how do I have a purpose because he woke me up this morning am I not here if I didn't have a purpose, the last sin I committed, he'd have killed me. I'd have been dead. Hallelujah. So you got to start thinking like that. Hallelujah. When you say, woe is me. Uh-uh. When you open your eyes and he breathed the breath of life into you, you should have said, God, I thank you for another chance, another day to walk in my purpose and to fulfill my calling you. I don't care if you don't even know what it is, but it's another chance and another day to serve the great and mighty God. It's another chance to do what he's called you to do. So hallelujah, when you wake up in the morning, I don't care what the night before brings you, know that you have purpose. Know that you have something in God that he wants from you. Your neighbor, look to your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Your neighbor can't do what you can do. We were all wonderfully, specially made. We are peculiar. What you have, your neighbor doesn't have. What your neighbor has, the next person doesn't have. So what God has placed in you, it is for you to operate in. It is for you to walk in. No matter what you may think, no matter how you may feel, it is for you. And then just because of that, I begin to say, God, I thank you. Because his love, we talked about it, God is love. What kind of love is this that I could willfully sin? I could willfully turn my back on you and walk in disobedience and go against everything that you poured and instilled into me. And you love me so much that you put me in a situation to wake me up. You put me in a situation. He will put you in places to get your attention. Now, I don't know about you, but I'll take that than him killing me. Because you could drop dead where you stand. But he loves us so much that he puts us in a situation that forces us to turn back unto him. Hallelujah. How are many of you are excited about that? I'm excited that chance after chance after chance. And we don't realize that these are all second chances that we're getting. These are all second chances. You know, we often say, oh, God, if I would had another chance to do this situation different, but what we really? You know why? Because we don't think about the little things that lead us up to what we call a big moment. No, no. Hallelujah, it doesn't work like that. Every moment, every opportunity, hallelujah, you got to take advantage of because in today's world, many that have gone through the same things that you have gone through have not made it. They didn't make it. God said they didn't have another chance. But we take the light of what God is going to do. We expect him, hallelujah. We think he has to give us another chance. He doesn't have to do anything. He's already done it. We were born, 
hallelujah, to worship him. We was born to praise him. So if we find ourselves not doing what we was created to do, he can just wipe us dead. But he loved you so much. He loved you so much. It's not like the love that your spouse give. It's not like the love that your parents give. There is no greater love but the love of God that would do anything to get your attention, to bring you back into his graces. Hallelujah. So we see Jonah. Now I said, all right, I got to get off of Jonah because when Jonah gets to the fourth chapter, Jonah begins to get uh, jealous, angry. Now he gets beside himself thinking that he can tell God what to do because God used him to preach to a people. That's not your place. It's not your place. Do what God say and step aside. Don't worry about that other person. I don't care who you think is worthy or not. The moment you think somebody is not worthy, you're unworthy. That's the moment you could drop dead because we're all God's children. Hallelujah. So it's nothing too great and nothing too small. Hallelujah. So I had to say, Joan, I got to leave you now because I'm excited to see God's people get another chance. I'm excited to see God step in and move like he want to move. It brings me joy to see God move on your behalf. So I had to leave Jonah. Hallelujah. So then I begin to go and look. Hallelujah. At the number two. And just go with me, hallelujah. The number two in the dictionary told me it's the sum of one and one. So I said, okay, one plus one, we get it. So God and me, God is one. He doesn't need anything else. But me by myself, I need something else. And what do I need? I need God. So I said, one and one, God and me. I can accomplish and conquer anything. I can co overcome anything as long as I keep God with me. So then I began to look at another def uh, definition. And it said one less than three. I said, okay, one less than three. Spiritually complete is the number three. So as long as I stay with God, hallelujah, and keep him in the center and keep him at the head of my life, I'm complete in him, hallelujah. But it's the moment when I take God away. It's the moment when I subtract him that I go back into the number two. Now I have division within myself, hallelujah, because I've gotten rid of my purpose. I've gotten rid of my creator, hallelujah. God, again, is the only one who can be whole, but we need him. So he, being the God that he is, he said, okay, you back at two, come back to me. Come back to me. Come unto me, all that are uh, heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. He said, come back to me. Because when you come back to him, you line back up, and he puts you back in number three. But you can't do it without him. This is your day to come back. This is your second chance. This is your moment, hallelujah, to line up with the will of God, to line up what God has called you. Some of you may not have went out here and sinned. You may not have done that, but you're walking in disobedience because I know God has called each and every one of us to do something. And if we're not doing it with our whole heart, if we're not doing it the way God has commanded us, then we're still walking in sin. Hallelujah. How do I know that? Hallelujah. I begin to look at some examples in the Bible. Hallelujah. And I'm on the time, so I'm going to make sure I get this in. But I begin to look at the examples of those who had second chances and took advantage of second chances. I begin to look at Moses, hallelujah, who committed murder, but God instead used him, still called him out, still gave him another chance. And Moses used that chance, hallelujah. And he began to do what God had commanded him to do. He began to deliver God's people, hallelujah. I begin to look at David, hallelujah. We talk about him all the time. He is a great and mighty man, a man after God's own heart. But before any of that, hallelujah, David committed murder and adultery. But God gave him another chance, and he didn't take advantage of it. Hallelujah. I begin to look, as we said, Jonah, hallelujah. I begin to look at Peter. Peter, Peter walked with God, walked with Jesus all three years of his ministry, saw the miracles, saw the hand of the Lord, and yet and still he turned his back. And he denied Christ. Hallelujah. But even in that, hallelujah, God still used him to be the cornerstone. God still used him to start the church. Look at that. I don't care what you do. You may not have committed murder. You may not have committed adultery. But you did something. And if God can do it for them, he sure enough can do it for you. So you bet take advantage hallelujah because the bible tells me shall we continue in sin that grace may abound god forbid hallelujah so what i'm telling you when you go through life and when you're going through situations i need you to start thinking hallelujah my god what if my grace runs out lord i better do what you said to i'd rather risk doing what the lord say to do than not move and not do and drop dead
head. So you have to let your light shine. Hallelujah. So let's look at an example of someone who did not take advantage of the second chance given by God. Hallelujah. You said evangelist, well, who didn't do that in the Bible? I begin to look at Cain, hallelujah, and Abel. Hallelujah. And I know, hallelujah, on the Bible, it just gives you a topical, but you've got to really study and reach out, really get an understanding. Hallelujah. We know that when Cain comes, he's the firstborn of Adam and Eve after sin. Hallelujah. And so I had to begin to think and begin to think and reach out. And I begin to understand because I was like, okay, I don't get it, but I get it. Hallelujah. His family, hallelujah, is thrown out. The land is now cursed because of Adam's sin, right? As this child is born, this child is now praised and the family is so excited because we have a man child, one to come. And they put a title on him as a savior because he was the tiller of the ground. Why was that so important? The ground was cursed. They couldn't eat. They couldn't be nourished. They couldn't get what they needed. So they took their firstborn and they taught him, hallelujah, to cultivate a cursed thing. They taught them how to cultivate a cursed thing just so that they could get what they thought they needed, nourishment and food, trying to escape the punishment that God had given them. And so then the Bible tells me that she bore Abel, and then it just says she bore Abel. It didn't give me nothing else about Abel. And I'm like, well, dang. But yet Abel is the one who God accepted, right? So Abel was a shirt hater. He took care of the sheep. Hallelujah. So then when I begin to look at it, hallelujah, the sheep, we are the sheep. Right? God sends, <laughs> he sends the sheep herdsmen to look after us. I said, okay, well, David's job, I mean, I'm sorry, Abel's job was to look after the sheep. And now Cain is to look after the ground. So it goes on to tell us that they go to offer sacrifices. And then I'm going to offer sacrifices. You have to understand what I just said. Cain is loved by his family. Again, he's their savior. He's loved and cherished and adored by them. So they go to offer up these sacrifices. And he thinking he got it all together. Oh, I got this. I'm good. He brings to God an offering. His brother, in turn, brings the best offering, the first of the cattle. He gives God the fattest parts, the best part, and sacrifices it up to God. Your Bible doesn't tell you this, but in the book of Jasir, it tells you that God receives the sacrifice as he sends down the fire to consume Abel's sacrifice. And then someone reminded me, well, Cain had to see it. Because why would he get so angry? Why would he get so upset? Because as soon as he saw it, he got angry, and he got upset, and he was like... Uh, you just gonna take, I'm the firstborn. I brought you a sacrifice. What you mean you, you don't want my sacrifice? So now he gets mad at his brother instead of getting mad at himself. And I'm gonna tell you why it was so important. Because Cain brought something to God that was less than what was commanded. He brought what was less than what God said. You're supposed to give God the best, the first fruit. If you don't sow your tithes, if you don't give God the best gift that he's put in you, whatever God has given you to do, when you come in here and you don't give him your best praise, when you don't give him your best worship, he knows how tired you are, but it doesn't matter. He said to bring me the best. And when he created us, he made us good. So whatever he put in us to do, it's the best. But when we don't walk in excellence and we don't walk according to what he's given us, we find ourselves like Cain. And what happened to Cain when he just tried to give God whatever he wanted to give God? Oh, I don't feel good today. I don't feel like it. I'm going to just come here. Hallelujah. I'm here. Don't nobody care that you're here. God don't care that you're here. It is to your advantage that you're here. So when he allows you to walk into his house, you present your best self. You present the best of you to your God. You worry about everything else when you get back outside. But when you come before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you give him the best of you. Hallelujah. Because if you don't, it's just that simple. But if you do not, God comes to Cain and he says, why are you so angry? Why are you so upset? He said, did I not, do you not have a chance, the same chance, the same opportunity that your neighbor has, the same chance that your brother has? You're looking at him mad because he's doing what I called him. You're looking at your neighbor mad because they're doing what God commanded them to do to the best of their ability, not your ability, because we all are on different abilities. But he said, you're looking at him angry, but all you have to do is do what I have commanded of you. So right there. God has given him a second chance to get it right. All he had to do was bring an offering that was accepting and pleasing unto God. So when the man and the women of God stand before you and say, give God a praise, hallelujah, you just, and they come back and say, no, 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 no. I want you to see that you're taking advantage of the second chances that you're given. 
You come in here and you give him your best. You go to work and you give him your best. Any and everything that you want to do, you give your best. You work these businesses and you give your best. Dare not come before the creator, the one who gave it to you, the one who gave you life, and offer him the scrappings, offer him the less of it. How dare you? If you don't give him what he's required, hallelujah, after he gives you a chance, hallelujah, you'll be cast out, hallelujah, then you'll be like Cain. He didn't take advantage of his second chances, and then he was marked, hallelujah, with a mark, and sent out into the world. No, no one could touch him or kill him, but he was had nothing. He was scrounging through life. Why? Why someone who has the promises, hallelujah, and the inheritance to get everything, why do we choose, hallelujah, to go against the one who can give it to us because we think we know what's best. We think we know we, we can do it better. And then we find out we can't. But because he loves us so much, he gives us a second chance. So what do we do with our second chance? What do we do with the chance that God has given us? I'm going to tell you what we do in Colossians. Go with me to Colossians. And it's going to be a lot that we read. But hear ye the word of the Lord on today. Hallelujah. So that when you leave this place, this word will resonate and reside. And anytime you find yourself in a circumstance or situation, I want you to reflect and think back. Hallelujah. On what God is doing. And this is the message version. Hallelujah. To us on today. He said, so if you are serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorb with the things right in front of you. Don't worry about the cares of the world. Hallelujah, it doesn't matter. Don't shuffle through, just, oh, what was, he said, lift up your head, O ye gates. Hallelujah. Be lifted up, ye everlasting door. For the King of glory shall come in. Which means he can come into any circumstance, in any situation. All you got to do is lift up your head. Hallelujah. He said, look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Your old life is dead. Your old life is dead. When you come into Christ, you forget the former things. You leave them behind. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though it's invisible to spectators, is with Christ and God. He is your life. You have no life without him. I'm sorry to tell you that. You may think you do, but you don't. When Christ, your real life, remembers, shows up again on this earth, you will show up too. The real you, the glorious you. Meanwhile, be content with obscurity like Christ. What is obscurity? Stop trying to make a name for yourself. Just do what God has called you to do. Let your works show for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> that means killing off everything connected with that way of death. Here we go. You ain't going to like this, but here we go. Killing off sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like, whenever you feel like it, and grabbing whatever attracts your fantasy. That is a life shaped by things and feelings. Shaped by things and feelings instead of God. I heard in Sunday school this morning they were talking about feelings. We cannot walk in feelings. Our God isn't a God of feelings. We say, oh, you know, it's just my fit. No, your feelings gonna lead you to what? Sin. Come out of it. Be clear, be sober-minded. It is because of this kind of thing that God is about to explode in anger. We heard that on Wednesday night. We got a second chance on Wednesday night, hallelujah. It wasn't long ago that you were doing all that stuff and not knowing any better. But you know better now. So make sure it's all gone for good. Bad temper, irritability, meanness, profanity, dirty talk. Don't lie to one another. You're done with the old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes you stripped off and put in the fire. Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it and old fashioned are now obsolete. 
I'm getting excited. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized and uncouth, slave and free mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. From this day forward, you're all included in Christ. Let Christ be the defining person in your life because this is your second chance. So chosen by God, what I say, chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even tempered, content with second place. Uh Uh-oh. Quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. You can stop. Hallelujah. When you get your time, go back and read it. But this is the command that God has given to you. Hallelujah. So if you really want to walk in your second chance on today, hallelujah, this is what you got to do. Hallelujah. This is your moment you've been given. Hallelujah. You've been given a chance to do right. You've been given a chance to walk in the newness of life, to have a new hope, a new joy, a new peace. A new love. This is your moment today. So what are you going to do that God has extended an olive branch and given you another chance to walk according to his word, to be pleasing unto him? What are you going to do on today? I know what I'm going to do. I said, as for me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm going to proclaim the word of the Lord. I'm going to do what I ran from. I don't care who don't like it. I don't care who is upset that God put me back in place. But I will not take advantage of the grace that God has given me. And I will do what God has commanded me to do. And each and every one of you should feel like that on today. You should make that thing so personal because he loved you so much to send me on today to tell you that you're not left out. I did not forget about you. This is your moment. This is your chance. Stand up. Rise up in the God that is in you. Rise up out of that situation. Don't let it take you down. Don't let it keep you down. You serve a great and mighty God. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's nothing that you can do without God. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So this is your chance, hallelujah, to shake yourself, hallelujah. I'm excited because he loved us so much. I'm excited because he cared so much to come down and see about us. He sent a strong word to us on Wednesday, but he loved us so much. He said, you know what? I give you another chance. I don't know about you, but I'm going to take advantage of my chance. You can be real with yourself and say, you need this chance. It's something that you did not do. It's something that you forgot. It's something that you left out. But God said, you know what? I'm going to give you another chance. Before I kill you, before I let the circumstances take you under, I'm going to give you another chance to do it right. I don't know what it is that you didn't do. You know. You know on today. So you better get it right on today. You better do right on today. Jesus came and died that we could live. He came to give us life. So there's nothing that we can't accomplish. And I'm going to leave you with this. Jeremiah 29, 10 through 14. When you decide and make up in your mind on today, when you decide to do what God has called you to do for real, when you decide that the things of the flesh mean nothing, I don't care what businesses you got, none of it means anything without the Lord. And when we put him back in his rightful place, this is what he's going to do. This is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon 70 years are up and not a day before, what I'm going to say right there is on Wednesday night when we got the word, this was what he said to us. If we took heed to the word and if we hear the word on today, this is what he has to say. I'll show up and take care of you as I promised, bringing you back home. I know what I'm doing. Hear the word of the Lord. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not to abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else. 
I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. I'll turn things around for you. I'll bring you back from all the countries into which I drove you. I'll bring you home to the place from which I sent you off into exile. You can count on it. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> this is the promise that God has given us. So he said, I'll bring you back. So you worried about the wrong thing. All you do is focus on Jesus. Get your love back. Get your joy back. Get your peace back. Get your deliverance back. Get your mind back. Come to your senses and get back in place and line up with the God who wants to do nothing but give you all the good things that he so purposed for you. You're holding yourself up, saints of God. But on today, you have a chance. On today, you have a chance. On today, you have a chance to get what God has for you because he is the God of second chances. So what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? That's it. What are you going to I'm done. You heard the word of the Lord. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? He's brought you through some things, things that should have knocked you out, things you should have died from, some of you health scares that he could have taken your life. And hallelujah, you got back up, but you did not make a change. What are you going to do now? Don't find yourself back in a circumstance. Don't have him create something just to get your attention. Choose him this day. Choose to walk according to what he has called for you this day. And how much more will he do for you? Because it's a choice. We serve a God that gives us a choice. And how much greater gift will you get when you choose your Savior, when you choose your King? Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Will it be God? Will it be mammon? Mammon, money. Are you going to serve money more than God? Are you going to pursue the things of the world more than you're going to go after God? I know you have needs. I know you have desires. But we heard the word of the Lord and said he will do it when you get serious about him get serious and do what God has commanded you to do get serious don't look at me this is your moment to get serious with your God he came to see about you on today he came to offer you an olive branch on today get serious with your savior he's entrusted you on today Hallelujah, with the gift he's put in you. And you are purpose. There is something that God has for you. There is something that God wants from you. Don't let the enemy allow you to sit there and miss out on it. Begin to just open up your hands. Lift up your hands. Open your heart to God. Hallelujah. He wants to do it for you on today. Let him do it. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, what do you do now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. We thank God for our evangelists speaking the word. Hallelujah. And Father, give us strength now, God. Everything, oh God, that she poured out. Replenish every ounce of strength, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Touch her even now, oh God. From the top of her head to the cold soles of her feet, oh God. You're in strength, oh God, in clarity, oh God. Peace and understanding, oh God. Knowing that she passed the test, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, for her ability, oh God, to stand, oh God, in the midst of adversity, oh God. And declare her second chance today, God. We thank you, oh God. And we bless you. Maybe there's someone under the sound of my voice. She preached. You got your second chance, hopefully, while she was preaching. I'm not here to expound on anything. <laughs> a second chance is exactly that. Nobody shouldn't have to beg you for a second chance. I'm giving you a second chance. I'm giving you a chance to make it right. I'm giving you a chance to do over what you messed up and you wanted the opportunity to do it. I'm giving you the opportunity for a second chance. Maybe there's somebody who needs a second chance. The door been open. 
Say, when you hear, you could have heard at the beginning of the, of the service and said, I need a second chance. The door was already open. This is just the opportunity for you to come. It's the call to salvation, but the door has been open. I need a second chance. I ain't been feeling myself the way that I need to. And I need God to make some things right in my life. I need a second chance. I need him to make my mind over. I need him to refill me again with what I thought was the spirit. I need a second chance to get the Holy Ghost again since I've been saved. A second chance to apologize. Another opportunity to get my heart right. A second chance. And this is your opportunity. So let us examine our own selves. And we thank God for a second chance, for a fifth chance. <laughs> when I didn't deserve, but I am deserving. Because I'm made in his image and in his likeness. So since I'm made in his image and likeness, I should choose my words carefully. I do deserve this chance because my God shall supply all my needs. I'm just thanking God for my second chance. Hallelujah. Maybe there's one under the sound of my voice who decides that they want to make this their church home today. They've been looking and looking and looking, and you heard something today that made you want to say this is home for me. Maybe if under the sound of my voice and something has touched your heart, you can come as well. And we'll gladly receive you in. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. And while they're yet laboring, when we do dismiss, uh, we ask that you all would be mindful of those that are here. If you're not going to pray, don't stand around. Don't be a hindrance to someone getting their second chance. I don't know how the praise went down so much because we did an altar call. It says where there are souls, the angels in heaven are yet rejoicing. So maybe you're not happy with yours, but these that are coming up here, maybe we should stir them up by giving God the praise because they made a choice to do something. get so far away from home till I still was able to hear his voice. I know as a kid, that's what I used to do the most. My mom would call me and she said, you better be within earshot so when you hear my voice, you can get home safely. And she would yell my name across the neighborhood, but she was only calling me. All the other kids heard it, but they couldn't come because she was not calling them. I'm so glad that when God decided to make the call and other people heard the call that he still called my name. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. And we bless you, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God, for a second chance. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Because you walked into these doors. This is your day. 
This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. Get what you need from the Lord on today. You must see it. those who are preparing to leave, oh God, that they may leave and be dismissed, and those that are still here, oh God, that they might get their breakthrough and get what they need. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace. Wow. What a word. Listen, we're not out of word, but we're out of time. Thank you for joining us, Freeman to the Apostolic Church. I'm the senior pastor, Dr. Keith K. Curry, for a wonderful service we have today. Join us again, 7 o'clock on Wednesdays, 7 p.m., our power, and every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our worship service. You can sow by the number that's on the screen right now. We have plenty of ways to give, and I want you to use those ways to tithe, give an offering. If something blessed you, sow a seed. We call it Sow With Your Growth. Listen, see us next time. My name is Dr. Keith K. Curry, and I approve this message. It's worthy to be worth. I will call on the name of the Lord.